If the polls were not bad enough, if the economy were not dragging you down, if both Democratic candidates were not calling you out, if all that did not spell trouble for your campaign, how about one of the nation's leading conservative thinkers comparing you to Don Quixote? And not in a good way. Our fourth story tonight, tilting at windmills. It's not an alternative energy proposal. The conservative in question, George Will, in not his first shot at the McCain campaign, only his first since McCain dismissed those Georgetown cocktail party conservatives. Quote, are you going to get any better or is this it? He's quoting Orioles manager Earl Weaver about umpiring and saying, with mercifully only one debate to go, that is the question about John McCain's campaign. Before Tuesday night's uneventful event, Gall was fueling what might be the McCain Palin campaign's closing argument. It is less that Obama has bad ideas than that Obama is a bad person. This McCain and his female Male Sancho Panza say is demonstrated by bad associations Obama had in Chicago, such as with William Ayers. But in this economy, Will writes, the McCain Palin campaign's attempt to get Americans to focus on Obama's Chicago associations seem surreal, or as a British politician once said about criticism he was receiving, like being savaged by a dead sheep. Sancho Panza. We're all fiddling around with Dolores Umbridge, our contestant on Who Wants to Be a Millionaire, and it's George Will who hits the home run. Sarah Palin as the illiterate peasant sidekick to a retired country gentleman who suddenly goes nuts. Sancho Panza. More practically, both Obama and his running mate have in the last 24 hours effectively dared Quixote, uh, rather McCain, to wage his attacks on Obama in person at next week's debate. Obama going first after he was asked last night about the fact that McCain failed to tell his largest TV audience yet about Obama's supposed terrorist ties. Were you surprised that he didn't bring it up last night at the debate and use that line of attack? Well, I am surprised that, uh, you know, we've been seeing... Um, some pretty over-the-top attacks coming out of the McCain campaign over the last several days that he wasn't willing to say it to my face. The notion that people don't know who I am is a little hard to swallow. Uh, I've been running for president for the last two years. Today, Joe Biden reiterated that point a little more loudly. By the way, all of the things they said about Barack Obama in the TV, on the TV, at their rallies, and now in, on, on YouTube and everything else they're doing before the debate, and all the things they're saying after the debate, as recently as this morning, John McCain could not bring himself to look Barack Obama in the eye and say the same things to him. Look, folks. Claire said, Claire said, your neighborhood's like mine. Well, in my neighborhood, when you got something to say to a guy, you look him in the eye and you say it to him. Let's turn now to MSNBC political analyst Howard Feynman, also senior Washington correspondent for Newsweek magazine. Howard, good evening. Hi, Keith. We've got David Frum saying today that anger is a poor political advisor and that the Republicans should emulate Obama's coolness under fire. We have George Will's column. You've spoken to him. Is he warming up to coming out and saying not only is McCain going to lose this election, but maybe he should? Yeah, I did ask him that, and uh, he said no. We, that, uh, first of all, he compliments you on your work on ESPN. That's as far as he would go. Uh, but he said, lighten up, Keith, uh, and the answer is no. Uh, but he laid down some pretty heavy wood on, on McCain. I think there, there are two kinds of conservatives here, uh, Keith. They're, they're, they're the Georgetown cocktail party set, the, the sherry sippers, if you will, the George Wills, the David Frums, and then there's sort of the uh, red meat on the open uh, open pit kind, like Rush Limbaugh, and McCain is taking criticism from both. The uh, Georgetown set is saying, hey, you're not talking about the issues, you're, you're, you're being personal when you shouldn't be, and by the way, your huge bailout plan is a really bad idea uh, for more home mortgages. And then the Rush Limbaugh's of the world are saying, why don't you mention heirs by name. Why don't you do heirs and resco and write and all of that? So, so McCain is taking it from both uh, wings of the, of the conservative strategic camp at this point. But I don't, Will is not going to write another column, at least this week, calling for, uh, hope, hoping for McCain to lose. And, and to that point, the second part of that, I mean, we've all known about the, this uh, tenuous link with heirs for months. Only in the last week, the McCain camp apparently figured out the dire implications of this. They just put out a new heirs web ad today. Why, not so much why did he not do this at the debate, but why is he pretending his campaign outside of that debate has largely devolved into, into all heirs all the time? Why that, why that illusion? Well, because I think uh, before the last couple of days, he wanted to talk. He, he thought he wanted to talk about the economy going into the debate. 
uh, as the economy was uh, melting down day by day. Uh, he was kind of in a no-lose position in a way. If he took airs on directly, everybody would say, well, you're ignoring the economy. Why aren't you talking about the economy? But then it was clear after the debate the other night that when he did talk about the economy, he really wasn't doing himself much good with the conservative, as, as I say. And because Obama has projected a more steady sense of leadership in the midst of this campaign and as a democrat is benefiting from what most people think is a republican led uh, 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 excursion into chaos in the economy so mccain at this point has no choice left uh... and i think when i asked his campaign people about this uh... you know i said where, where are you going next they said stay tuned which to me means not only will the rnc have ads about airs i think you're going to be hearing more on that by name directly from McCain, and then at the debate next week. Oh, and is that why um, the Obama and Biden essentially dared him to do that? Uh, uh, because they, they want him to do that? And if so, why would they want him to do that? Well, because the, then the other thing kicks in, and everybody says to McCain, why are you talking about uh, airs when we should be talking about the economy? Also, it's personal now, Keith, mm -hmm. I think. Um, uh, McCain and Obama spent a lot of time in recent weeks calling each other liars, essentially, and other bad names. And I think it's personal. And I think Obama, who's a very cool customer, uh, reaches a point where he says, you know, I better respond and I better show some toughness here. And I think he's inviting it, and I think that's what he's going to see at the next debate at Hofstra next week. And there's always that, that wild card effect of the debates that the candidates sometimes forget, which is the other guy's supporters are all watching. And if you, your information doesn't live up to the sniff test, you, you may get beaten in front of your own supporters. So I guess that's, that's the other well part. That could very well happen. You expect to hear all about Ayers as uh, well as Resco and the dailies and you name it. Well, Next week in Long Island. I'm sure. I'm sure Obama has his little sheath of papers uh, per, per, uh, pertinent to the uh, the guys in McCain's past too. And, and absolutely. If you talk absolutely. to George Will, says I always love his baseball work and his kind <laughs> words about sports. <laughs> okay. Thank you, Howard. Howard Feynman okay, of Newsweek thanks, and MSNBC. Keith.